one may God's holy and you love you, make it in the season of Pentecost. Quick question, to see how observant you are. What's the message on our church sign out front? You may know. Don't be paid attention to the church signs. Well, we want to offer yes. The sign is too small. Okay, that's that's one of them. There, there's too much to say. Sign is too small. Come inside and hear the good news. That's the one. That's the one I want you to hear. But there's one that if you are coming from the east and coming west, you should see it. Let Jesus calm the waters. Who said that? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. That's exactly what it says. Let Jesus calm your waters or the troubled waters. Um, when, when my daughter put that up on the sign, <clears throat> I chose that not because that was a the perfect theme for this evening. That was several weeks ago, so I wasn't sure what was going to come up this evening. But it does serve as a perfect, perfect focus or theme for this evening. Let Jesus call, calm your troubled waters. Don't, don't lie to me and tell me that you don't have any troubled waters in your life because everybody does. Everybody has some sort of issue or challenge that they're facing in life. In the Bible, the Bible sometimes calls those troubled waters. And, and, and in our service this evening, especially the hymns, listen, listen to the hymns when you, when you read or sing the hymns. Beautiful um, water imagery, um, water having troubles with water, but then Jesus calming our troubled waters is the key thought that we want to take away from this evening. We'll be using the service you can follow along in your folders, or you can follow along on the screen. Um, we will start out with a, a relatively new one. We've sung it once, so I'll be playing the, the melody on the, on the piano as well. But it's called Christ the Sure and Steady Anchor. If you like the music, you can follow along in the hymnals. If you think you can do it with your ears, you can just do it by the screen. <laughs> we'll begin.
we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave His life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Covenant, 
torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mahola, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We sing the song together.
Hallelujah. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. The gospel reading for this evening is the gospel of Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. This falls right on the heels of the account that we studied last week, the feeding of the 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's sing the next hymn.
grace and mercy and peace are yours through the merits of Christ Jesus, God's Son, and our Savior. Amen. Our text for this evening is the Gospel lesson, which forms a, a, a nice focus for us. We read it on the side, maybe coming in if you were coming from the East. You've heard it in some of the hymns that you've, you've sung or are going to sing, the third one especially, and also the last one all as well. <coughs> but especially in, the, in God's Word, we are reminded that Jesus will calm our troubled waters. In fact, Jesus invites us to walk on the waves along with Him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, there's something about water that gives people a kind of a love-hate relationship with it sometimes. Some people love it, some people hate it. Depends on the circumstances sometimes. On the plus side, on the good side, the love side, there's something about water right there. It lowers the blood pressure. It makes you feel a little bit calm, more, more peaceful, easy in your life. We're, we're, we're so blessed here in Wisconsin. We've got two major rivers, more major rivers than that. We've got two great lakes, Michigan and Superior, bordering our borders. All kinds of lakes, not just up north, but down here. We can make use of those lakes. We can have pleasure. We can fish. We can do all kinds of things. We, we are supremely blessed here in Wisconsin because we've got lots of water. In, in, in my dream home of the future, probably will never happen, but I would love to be living or to be able to live on some kind of a body of water. I don't care if it's a stream. I don't care if it's a river, I don't care if it's a, a, a mid-sized lake, or I, I would love to live on Lake Michigan or Lake Superior or on the ocean somewhere. The sounds, the sights, it just brings you a little bit of an easy feeling in life. On the flip side, however, there's that hate relationship with water that some people have. Depending on the circumstances of life, maybe you have <coughs> witness the, the damage and the fury and the rage of water out of control as it's destroyed property and life and limb. You see it on the news all the time, flooding places. Water can, can do damage in life as well. Maybe you've had some kind of a, 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 a traumatic experience that had to do with water, maybe a, a near drowning incident. Maybe your, your boat was in some rough waters. Maybe you even capsized in a water sometime, maybe you can't get the movie Jaws out of your mind. And that has caused nightmares since the 1970s. Whatever it is, there are some times when people would prefer to stay away from the water and the problems that it can cause. So how has the water in your lake been in your life lately? I'm talking about if you're on the lake or on the river or on the ocean. I'm talking about the waters of life. The Bible sometimes talks about that. We sometimes talk about that as, as well. We are talking about the, the, the circumstances of life as if we are on water, floating on water, riding, boating on water. How are the waters in your life? Is it nice and calm, like glass? Nice little roll in the water? Is there a definite chop on the lake? Or are the winds and the waves threatening to overcome you in your boat in life? Whatever the circumstances. And, 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 and you can fill in the blank. <clears throat> I'm talking about when you go to the doctor and he tells you something or she tells you something that you really did not want to hear and that you sometimes are trying to just forget about because they don't want to go back there. They don't want to hear bad news like that. Do you really, really want to retire? You're getting to that point where you're just tired. You're really, really tired in life, and you really want to retire, but you, you crunch the numbers and you just cannot make it work. Insurance is going to be way too much if you have to come up with that kind of money on your own, and so you know that you're going to have to put it off for another four or six years of retirement. Are you part of that sandwich generation who have kids that are still independents, that are still depending on you for what they have in life, 
but you've also got a parent or two, or, or maybe three or four parents, that you're trying to take care of as well. They're aging, they can't do as much as they used to. There might be a, a nursing home in the future. Is that a wave that's going on in your life right now? Has there been some kind of a relationship fallout in your life? Is, it, is your daughter dating some loser that you pray that she doesn't end up with eventually? What are the waves like in your life? What's the water like in your life? Are, are you in debt up to your eyes because you just got out of school and you can't believe that you have this much money that you have to pay the government because of all the school loans? Or are you just starting school or in the middle of school and you're thinking, how in the world can I pay for, for, for the schooling? I'm never going to be able to make three or four or five years of, of school and pay for it all. I don't want to come up with that kind of debt. There are so many things in life that cause waves in our life. There are so many things in life that can go wrong and do go wrong at certain times. So many things that threaten to swamp us and swamp our boats and swamp our faith and our lives all together. Jesus knew that. Otherwise, why would he say, in this world you will have trouble? He promises, in this world, you, talking to Christians, you are going to have trouble. Sometimes it's of our own doing. Sometimes it's somebody else making trouble for us. Sometimes it's just general consequences of sin trouble in our lives. Murphy's Law, you know what? Roommates used to have a poster of it. Murphy's Law says that if something could go wrong, it most likely will sometime in the future. Today Jesus invites us, <clears throat> when you're going through all the waves that you're going through in life, he says, invite me to walk on those waves with you. No matter what they are, no matter what their source, no matter where they come from, Jesus reminds us that he will help us make it through those storms, those waves of life. When, when the winds of, of life, when the waves of life start to batter your faith and they start to threaten your very life, your, your spiritual life. When, when the psalmist says the, the waters are like they're roaring and they're foaming and they're surging and you're struggling to stay afloat because of all the waves that are battering your life and your faith, what does God say to us? He says, be still. Be quiet. Be still. Know that I am God. Know that I am your Father. Know that I will always be with you in these storms of life. I love you. That's what God says to us. This account comes to us on the heels of the feeding of the 5,000, and, 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 and we heard about that last week. Jesus had just heard some traumatic news. His good, close relative, possibly cousin, John the Baptist, had been killed. He had been beheaded by Herod. <coughs> And so Jesus wanted some time to get away. He needed some time to, to, to be alone. And so he tried. He went to a different part of the, of the Sea of Galilee. But the people followed him. They knew where he was going and they met him there. And so Jesus is working all night long, all day long. And then he feeds miraculously 5,000 plus people with two small fish and five small barley loaves of bread. And then he dismisses the crowd. And then he dismisses the disciples because he still wants that time away to process the, 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 the traumatic news that he has just heard that his cousin has just died or, or been killed. He wants some time away. So the crowds are gone. The disciples are gone over the lake. He says, I want you to go to Capernaum. I'll meet you over there. And he says, I need some time. And so then he goes up on this mountaintop to pray. And it seems like he's praying for hours on that mountaintop. You can kind of see the picture. Jesus is up there at a very, very good vantage point. He sees the boat with his disciples heading across, back over across the Sea of Galilee. But all of a sudden, a, a storm comes up. And, and that's not unusual because with the geography of the Sea of Galilee and the high hills and, and mountains on either side of it, storms come up quickly and downdrafts and, and the waves come up very, very quickly. People don't even realize that there's going to be bad weather when they set out. But there is bad weather. And it's not just your typical roll, it's 
not just a little bit of a chop. These are waves that are slamming against the, the sides of the boats. These are high winds that are threatening to swamp the boat. Those disciples are terrified for their lives. Jesus knows this, and so he comes to them. Comes down that mountain, he starts walking on the water. The disciples see him walking across the, 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 the Sea of Galilee, and they're terrified because they think it's a ghost. And they said, it's a ghost. What are we going to do? Jesus responds by yelling back to them. He says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And then Peter asks Jesus for a favor. He says, Lord, if it is you, if this is really you on the water, he says, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus extends the invitation. He says, come. And before he knew it, Peter was walking on water. Walking on the, yes, this is another miracle of Jesus. Almost as if it was dry land. He's walking on the storm sea. He's got his eyes on Jesus, but then all of a sudden he feels the winds, he sees the winds, he recognizes and remembers that he's in the middle of a terrible storm, and he takes his eyes off of Jesus for just a split second, and he begins to sink like a rock. Why? Why is he sinking like a rock? Because he lost his focus. He lost his focus on Jesus and his word. He doubted. His faith was being challenged and tested. Why? Because that's what sinful people do. That's what people like you and I do. More times than we would often like to admit, we doubt the promises and the assurances and the encouragements of Jesus himself. We doubt God's words that are intended for our good and intended for our comfort. You know, I know some of the waves that are hitting your life because you've shared them with me. Most of the waves that are hitting your life, I probably don't even know because you don't want to share them with anybody else. I, I, I wish that you would share them with me because I would love to, to take you to God's word and, and receive the comfort that God's word gives us. But sometimes we're private people and we don't want people to know about those things. What I also know is that whatever those forms, those waves take, whether it's a pain that will not go away, a, an emotional pain, uh, the pain of a loss or the pain of loneliness, or whether it's physical pain, you're getting older and, and things are creeping up on you and, and, and the health is not the way that it used to be in your life, whether it's your family problems, whether whatever it is, the storms in your life, whether it's a, a guilty conscience that has been plaguing you and following all the days of your life, those storms come with a never-ending battle. And they come straight from our sinful nature. They come straight from, from the people around us, the sin around us. And what does Jesus do? As he does in the Gospel lesson for this evening, he says, come. And he extends his hand out to us. Now, 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 what do you do when Jesus says, come, extends that invitation, and extends his hand out to you? I mean, we always have to be careful about that because we want to make sure that we are not the reason for our salvation or we're not the cause of our salvation, but Jesus is. But we can say that we take Jesus' hand and we take his invitation by faith. And we receive his promises by faith. We trust his word, his powerful word that comforts and sustains and encourages us. And it, it gets us out of the doldrums of life. It takes away the sins that our conscience is plaguing us with by reminding you that you are forgiven no matter what it was in your life. Those sins are gone on the cross. The, the storms that come from a never-ending battle with our, our sinful nature, those things are gone because of what Jesus offers us in his word and what he has given us through his life and death and resurrection. Jesus offers us the comfort in his word like we heard in the second lesson. Such a beautiful passage from Romans chapter, chapter 8. Is there anything that will separate you from God's love? Anything. And he goes through a laundry list of, this is a powerful thing, this is a powerful thing, and this is a terrible thing. 
could that possibly separate you from the love of God, which is the Christ Jesus? And Paul says, no. That's impossible because God's love conquers all of those things. And he reminds us that all things will work out for your eternal good. That, that first hymn that we sang before, Christ the sure and steady anchor in the fury of the storm. That's what Jesus is for you. When the storms come terribly into your life, Christ is that calm and steady anchor. Take Jesus' hand. Believe his promises in his word. Trust his word. Together with him, you will walk on water, no matter how rough that water is. Until what? That first hymn tells tell us again. Until you finally reach the shores of heaven. Amen. Please stay with The peace of God which goes beyond our understanding. We will guard your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by confessing our Christian faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, life of life, true God of true God, the God of not made, of one being with the Father, through the all things to reign, for us and for our salvation, in the end of the covenant, was the heart of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the order of the judge, the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity to the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look up for resurrection. Strengthen our weak faith, 
Give us all we need for body and soul, so that we all live in Christ and through Christ, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 